What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my week two top 25. After the first full slate of action this past college football weekend, it's time to update my top 25. And as per usual with the opening poll, there is going to be a ton of movement, either big or small. There's, again, a lot of first impressions made, a lot of things that, hey, maybe this team is better than what I thought. Maybe this team is worse than what I thought, and some reordering of things here as well. But, guys, it's just so good to have college football back. And if you are as big of a college football nerd as I am, you have to hit the subscribe button and you have to ring the bell because you guys got to know when I upload. I'm posting a ton of videos this college football season, and you want to make sure you stay tuned in for everything I have to offer here on my channel. But thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video it really does help support me in a lot more ways than you can even imagine and if you'd like to continue to support what i do here on youtube you can like you can comment you can share or any other way to interact with the channel is going to help to support it and i really appreciate everything that you guys do for this channel but if you want to follow me in more ways than just that you want to know uh, about my journey as an aspiring sports media professional about my journey as a sports media student here on campus kind of look at what i do well, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter at TailgateNate29. Would really appreciate it if you give me a follow. And uh, yeah, guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into this. Dive on into this right here. That is my week two top 25. Again, there's going to be a ton of movement. I'll talk about why I have teams placed where I do and just sort of, again, what led me to make the decisions that I did and moving teams around where I did. But first, before we dive on into the poll, you guys know I have to throw out my honorable mention list. A lot of the same teams from last week with one new addition that actually did drop out of my poll from last week. Uh, there's one team here that you will not see, and it's the Florida State Seminoles. Look, Florida State has really, really struggled at the beginning here of this season. And as of right now, they don't deserve to be anywhere near a top 25 poll. And the, again, apologies for my phrasing on that. I'm just going to, my phrasing on that, I'm just going to call it how, how it is. DJU has got to play better. The Florida defense, the Florida State defense has got to play better, especially that rush defense. They can't allow opponents to control the clock. The rush offense has to get better. There's a lot of things with Florida State that needs fixed, and they got a game coming up against the team that's on my honorable mention list this next week against the Memphis Tigers, one of the best teams in Group of Five. Good win for them this past week. Boise State, same thing. They were in a little bit of a battle with Georgia Southern in a very, very exciting game to watch, but they ended up coming out on top. Uh, and then Liberty uh, was able to beat Campbell this past week. Not too much trouble. The Flames still an honorable mention here on the top 25. If Nebraska beats Colorado, oh, watch out. Maybe Nebraska can break into my top 25 as right now they stand here in my honorable mention slot. Same with Washington, Iowa State. And even though they lost to Penn State and they got some things to fix, I still think West Virginia deserves an honorable mention here. So there are a couple teams out of the Big 12. You go to the ACC. I still like the SMU Mustangs. Yes, it was a slow game against the Nevada Wolfpack, but Nevada was able to beat Troy, made that uh, close game look a little bit better. And then SMU went and mangled their opponent that they played this past week. So, hey, those are the teams that didn't end up making my top 25 poll. So who did? Let's find out right now. New into the poll this season at number 25 is the Louisville Cardinals. No stranger to the tailgate Nate top 25. They were in it throughout the majority of last season. And, well, there were just some teams that I ended up liking a lot better than them to uh, end up not putting Louisville in my poll. They were an honorable mention last week, and they are in the top 25 poll now. Louisville was able to destroy Austin P uh, last week, and I really overall like the way that Louisville played last week. And you go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the stats that this Louisville Cardinals team was able to put up. Tyler Shuck played well, 232 yards, four touchdowns for him. Isaac Brown in the running back room was really good, as was Duke Watson, as was... Kijuan Brown, so, uh, all of them had at least 65 yards rushing and one touchdown on not even double-digit carries for any of them. In fact, Isaac Brown, a 77-yard touchdown run, averaged 24.6 yards per carry. Duke Watson averaged 14.3 yards per carry. Wide receiver room, Jadon Thompson, Ja'Cory Brooks looked good. Of course, this Louisville defense was sensational, only held Austin P to 106 yards. Louisville's a team that I like here. Again, another contender in the ACC. They've jumped up here to number 25. Clemson falling to 24 is not due to part in that I think Clemson played bad. Uh, I mean, look, they definitely didn't play great. They could have played a lot better. But there were moments throughout that game where you did see some slight improvement overall from Cade Klubnik in this Clemson offense. But And look, it, it, 
it speaks in large part to how good the Georgia defense is, but the Clemson offense has still got to get better. And yes, there are a lot of teams that I still like a lot more than them, uh, which is why they uh, – fell seven spots here to 24. Again, they lost to Georgia. Not a bad loss per se, but they didn't play significantly well enough. Again, there are things and moments throughout this game that would make you suggest, wow, okay, they've improved some. Overall, Cade Klubnik still was not that great. Overall, the offense was still sluggish, and the defense, as soon as this game got out of hand, well, this game was finished. Uh, more than, uh, I believe, seven yards per play for Georgia there in that game. Of course, they're one of the best, if not the best team in college football, one of the most efficient offenses in the country. But there's a lot of things that Clemson's got to get better that, uh, get better at. They fell seven spots down to 24. Welcome to the top 25 poll, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Huh? They're able to beat Florida State, and then they just last week uh, beat the Georgia State Panthers there as well. Georgia Tech, I mean, come on. They absolutely deserve a spot here in the top 25. And I, I, I know Florida State just lost to Boston College, and maybe Boston College even deserves an honorable mention spot. Not to me, maybe to some of you out there. Yes, they definitely do. But for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets guys, I, I really, really like this team. And if what I saw in Clemson and what I saw in that game against Georgia State is going to continue the rest of the season, that's a team that can win eight, nine, maybe if they get some bounces of the ball there, pull off another upset, a 10-win season. I really like Georgia Tech this year. I think they can push to contend in the ACC, and they're here in my poll at number 23. Haynes King has played well. Jamal Haynes is a really good running back. The Georgia Tech defensive front is outstanding. It's a much better defensive front than it was last season. Really like the Yellow Jackets. They're here at number 23. 22 is NC State, and they got a challenge from Western Carolina. Now, I still really like this team. I think Grayson McCall is going to pick it up. Jordan Waters, still, even though they uh, had that challenge, played a really good game. The NC State defense definitely has its improvements to make, and they got to improve it fast. They got a game against Tennessee coming up here this weekend. But overall, for the NC State Wolfpack, still a team that I like. Let me see those improvements, huh? And once I see those improvements, I'll be willing to move NC State back into my top 20. They did fall out now. A lot of teams I did, did like a little bit more than them have jumped them now. Uh, they are down at number 22. Kansas has risen a spot to 21. Not much to take away from Kansas. You played Lindenwood last week. Uh, Jalen Daniels, still fantastic. Devin Neal had an insane day. Really, really good uh, game for him. And just overall, when you go ahead and you take a look at the way this Kansas team has uh, played so far, I mean, look, a really interesting test is going to be coming up this week because Kansas has to play the Illinois Fighting, uh, fighting uh, Illini. Now, again, very, very interesting game there, and we'll, we'll definitely see what happens. But Jalen Daniels, 9 of 15, 148 yards. He'll pick it up. Again, Devin Neal on eight carries, had 112 yards and two touchdowns. Luke Grimm was great in the wide receiver room. Uh, the defense was good. Two sacks, five tackles for loss, six pass defended. Did have a pick six in there, I do believe, as well, if not a fumble return. Uh, no, I believe it was a fumble return touchdown, actually. Regardless, Kansas had a defensive touchdown. I really like the Jayhawks this year still. They're up one spot to number 21. Move along the rest of the poll a little bit quicker here. We dive on into the top 20 where you do see the, uh, the Iowa Hawkeyes in here at number 20. It was a very slow start, right? This was an Iowa team that was that, that just got out to a really, really slow start offensively. And you figured, oh boy, here we go again. And it, it was kind of the same story for Iowa here in that game against Illinois State to where it was the entirety of last season. And it was the defense helping to create offense for this team, which again is not necessarily a bad thing. That's what you want your defense to do. But the Iowa offense still was not all that fantastic. I mean, you definitely see its improvements from last season. Cade McNamara, after having talks about, oh, he, you know, struggled throughout fall camp, 251 yards, three touchdowns. Caleb Johnson had over 100 yards rushing and two touchdowns. Kamari Moulton, 19 carries for 65 yards. Reese Vander Z, two touchdowns out of the wide receiver room. Of course, the Iowa defense again, forcing those things. And 492 yards of total offense for the Iowa Hawkeyes, making me eat my earlier words a little bit there. Again, the defense did help to create offense, and this Iowa offense does seem to have improved from the past couple of seasons. I still think there's some work to do, but overall, you love the improvements the Hawkeyes have made. They're up there to number 20. One guy that is not getting a lot of attention, and it kind of is irritating me as a college football fan, is Tay Tyroa McMillan. 10 catches, 304 yards, and what, three or four touchdowns? I'll double check and fact check that for all you fine people right now, but oh my goodness, 
have yourself a day. Now, the reason that Arizona overall has dropped is they did get a test from New Mexico. And overall, I think Arizona is a much better team than New Mexico. And defensively, yeah, Arizona has got a ton of things to work on. But offensively, Noah Fafita was absolutely sensational. 422 yards again. Tay Tyroa McMillan, 10 catches, 304 yards. And receiving touchdowns are you kidding me he's one of the best wide receivers in college football write the headlines for him do it uh, jacory krosky merrick quayley conley both had amazing days running the football this arizona offense is going to be explosive this year the defense has got some things that needs to change which is why they fell three spots there to number 19 lsu again they lost a thriller to usc and i don't punish them too much again it's just the reality of early season college football lsu has dropped a little bit down here to number 18, although you very well, if you wanted to, could put them above Kansas State. Maybe you could put them above Oklahoma either. I still think Garrett Nussmeyer played well, and even though the stats won't show you everything, LSU's defense does seem to be improved from where it was last season. They're getting a little bit more pressure, and they're just able to overall make some better plays on the football, and they were able to slow USC down throughout points there in that game. Not enough, though, as USC had that last possession. They were able to go down the field and score. I think LSU is still going to be a true contender. Again, this is not a season to where one loss is going to kill you. I still like Garrett Nussmeyer. I like a lot of those offensive pieces. Defensively, you know I love me some Harold Perkins. I think LSU is still going to be all right. They did drop six spots, however, there to number 18. Kansas State and Oklahoma are up there at 17 and 16. Of course, Kansas or Oklahoma, former Big 12 school now in the SEC, who looked very impressive against Temple. And hey, get used to hearing Jackson Arnold to Deion Burks. That connection was working all day for them. Oklahoma's up three spots to number 16, and Kansas State's up three spots to number 17. I do really like what I saw out of Kansas State this past week, a 41-6 to win over the University of Tennessee Martin, only 134 yards and eight first downs allowed by this Wildcat defense. Offensively, I mean, yeah, maybe there are things that can get better. Third downs can get better. Avery Johnson definitely can have a much better game than he did here, but DJ Giddens had himself a great day on the ground, and overall, still some really good things seen from Avery Johnson. You you want him to get a little bit better here, but I still overall like what I saw from the Kansas State Wildcats. Both of those teams rose up three spots for me, and now we go ahead and crack into the top 15, where Oklahoma State, yeah, they made a pretty big jump. They jumped up six spots, and I got to be honest with you, I think I had Oklahoma State ranked, ranked way too low there at the start of this season. I mean, they were ranked number 17 by the uh, AP poll. I had them at number 21, as if you do that math really quickly. So they now are in my top 15. And look, uh, overall, you had pretty similar yardage numbers uh, comparatively from Oklahoma State to South Dakota State. And the defense overall can still play a little bit better. South Dakota State had a lot of moments throughout this game where the offense was cooking and the offense could do pretty much whatever they wanted. But they were able to force one turnover from South Dakota State, being the Oklahoma State defense and when you take a look at the quarterback position Alan Bowman was good that's the main point of concern entering this uh, season on if Alan Bowman can clean up the touchdown to interception ratio 245 yards two touchdowns for him in that past game I would say he was able to clean it up pretty nicely Ollie Gordon was doing his thing 126 yards three touchdowns he's sensational Oklahoma State's going to be a really good team to watch out for within the Big 12 this season. Uh, Oklahoma State's now in my top 25 and number 14. The biggest mover, though, from this past week, and it probably should come as no surprise to any of you, was the USC Trojans. They jump up 10 spots after their win against the LSU Tigers. And again, much like LSU, even though the stats aren't going to show it, you go back and you watch that game, USC's defense does look a whole lot better than it does last season. They're able to get a little bit more pressure. They're able to make some more plays on the football, this, that, and the other. USC did look very impressive. Miller Moss looked very impressive. And I mean, you want to talk about this wide receiver room for the USC Trojans. Oh my goodness. They looked really, really good this past week. And I mean, just overall, when you go ahead and break down this game, I'll give you some stat lines here. Uh, Miller Moss, again, 378 yards and one touchdown. Woody Marks with the game-winning rushing touchdown. He'll fit into the running back room well. Kyron Hudson, Zachary Branch, Deuce Robinson, Jacoby Lane, they all look spectacular in the wide receiver room. Defensively, three tackles for loss, one pass breakup. And even though, again, three tackles for loss doesn't sound like much, they were able to provide some pretty solid pressure. I think USC is a true college football playoff contender this season. They've jumped up for me to number 14. 
Tennessee has kind of stayed right where they are. They're absolutely demolished Chattanooga this past week. Nico Iamaliava looked every bit as the next coming at the quarterback position that every Tennessee fan has said he was going to be. And uh, again, he's got a ton of weapons around him. Tennessee defense played well. They get a big test uh, against North Carolina State this week, but I don't have too much more to say on Tennessee. They don't move. They're sitting here at number 13. Michigan and Utah have both fell, and maybe you switch Michigan and Tennessee, but I'm keeping Michigan above Tennessee for right now. I think, look, uh, and you've heard me talk about Michigan before, right? The quarterback play, uninspiring. Not that great. Davis Warren wasn't that great. Alex Orgy wasn't that great. You go ahead and take a look at the defensive side of the ball for Michigan, and okay, well, look. That side of the ball was really, really good. But along with Davis Warren and Alex Orgy, that wide receiver room did not play that great. Donovan Edwards did not have that great of a game, but you know he's going to get better. Coel Mullings was still able to run the football well. There are still some good things to take away from Michigan, and it's not like it was all bad from Davis Warren and Alex Orgy. More so when you talk about Davis Warren, he did show some really good things, and he probably will end up being that Michigan starting quarterback this year. It wouldn't surprise me if they switched to uh, – Alex Orgy, but Davis Warren was the guy that got the start is actually what I meant to say earlier. Not he's probably going to be the starting quarterback. He was the starting quarterback. Don't know what I'm talking about, but the Michigan Wolverines defensively amazing offensively improve the quarterback play, improve the wide receiver play outside of Colston Loveland. And you're going to have yourself a team that can go win a back-to-back -back national championship. So, uh, hey, they did fall one spot for me. And Utah fell two spots to number 11. And, look, I, I don't really have much to say on the Utes this week. Cam Rising is back and looked really, really good. And just overall, when you go ahead and talk about this Utah team, I mean, they absolutely demolished demolished uh, Southern Utah. Cam Rising only threw 15 passes. Hey, 254 yards and five touchdowns for him. Not a bad day at all. Utah rushing was a by committee effort. Looked really good there. Dijon Stanley had himself a phenomenal game. Brant Keithy, welcome back to him, had a phenomenal game. There are just a couple teams that I like a little bit more than Utah right now. Just a little bit more. And one of those being the Miami Hurricanes. If you watch my weekly takeaway videos, you guys know that I think Miami is going to be a pride and true college football playoff contender this season. Look, I think Miami is simply sensational. I think Cam Ward is fantastic. Damien Martinez fits into that offense really, really well. Uh, you have Xavier Restrepo, Jacoby George, and some other really talented pieces in that wide receiver slash tight end, pass catching room, whatever it is you want to call it. The defensive front looks really good at being able to get pressure. And yeah, the rush defense can improve for the Miami Hurricanes, absolutely. The secondary looked fantastic. They were able to force Florida turnovers. They were able to force a ton of mistakes. And when you go back and you watch that game, I, to me at least, it was more so that Miami looked very, very impressive than Florida looked disappointing, if that makes any sort of sense. I think Miami just looked really, really good. I think they're going to be a really good team for the rest of this season and a true college football playoff contender. And right now, the clear front runner in the ACC, I think Miami is up there at number 10. Missouri, for me, is at number nine. Absolutely demolished their opponent this past week. I do believe that they ended up playing that game on a Thursday. Uh, I will actually double check that. I, I do believe it was Thursday. Yes, it was Thursday. Demolished Murray State. Some great defensive touchdowns. And look, yes, they did lose Blake Baker. Well, they didn't seem to miss a beat defensively. Only 89 yards allowed. Only allowed five Murray State first downs. Four of 15 on third down were the racers. While this Missouri offense was absolutely clicking. Brady Cook, 228 yards and a touchdown. Nate Noel fit in well. Marcus Carroll fit in well. Luther Burden was doing his thing, as was the rest of this wide receiver room. By committee offensive effort, it'll get tougher for Missouri coming up here. But overall, still one of the top 10 teams in the country. They're at number nine. At number eight is the Oregon Ducks. And look, I still really like Oregon. And I don't have a ton of concerns about Oregon up to this point, but especially when you only have one game to go off of, you got to take a look at how teams played. And right now for Oregon, with the way they played, they should have beaten Idaho by a whole lot more. Look, Dylan Gabriel was absolutely fantastic, as was the wide receiver room. The running back room was good. The offense gained a ton of yards, and the defense allowed Idaho to not really get a whole lot going. However, Oregon, much like those Washington games last year, missed a ton of opportunities. I think some fourth down conversions that didn't go their way, a missed field goal or two in that game. 
Oregon has got to take advantage of those opportunities moving forward. They have Boise State coming up this week, which if you're not careful, the Broncos can burn you. They are a really, really good team. So I would watch out if you are Oregon. But overall, I mean, look, I have a lot. I talked about this in my weekly takeaway video. I have a lot more concerns with teams like Michigan, Florida State than I do with Oregon. I think overall they're going to be just fine. And I think in no time you'll see them vault back in to my top five. But after that week one performance, compared to what some of the other teams did, I have to slide Oregon down here to number eight. And it's not that I've sort of fallen out of love with Oregon. I still think they can prove to be a top four team in the country at the end of the season. They can still contend with teams like Penn State and Ohio State within the Big Ten Conference. But due to the performances of them and the other teams above them, I had to slide them down here to number eight. And Penn State rose up a spot to number seven because, man, oh, man, did the Nittany Lions look absolutely fantastic in that game against West Virginia. The defense, hey, that rush defense just showed absolutely no mercy. Uh, a, a rushing attack that was West Virginia's bread and butter last season was just stuffed, absolutely stuffed. That Penn State defensive front was great. The Drew Aller downfield passing attack looks a whole lot better. I'm still not convinced that it's fully there, but it looks a whole lot better. Uh, Nick Singleton had himself a game. Katron Allen, not so much, but you know he's going to be able to pick it back up. Abdul Carter was an absolute force, and this Penn State defense overall looks like it's going to be one of the best in the country this season. Penn State is a team that absolutely is deserving to rise the ranks here. Again, I can't rise them too much because I do like some of the other teams above them a little bit better. But when you talk about Penn State, rising up a spot is absolutely what needs to happen for them. They played fantastic. They're going to contend in the Big Ten this season. Something feels different about this Nittany Lion program. They're up to number seven. Alabama's up to number six. Not much to say about them. They demolished their team in Western Kentucky, 63-0. Jalen Milrow was absolutely doing his thing. 200 yards passing. He had uh, 79 yards on the ground, two touchdowns there. Justice Haynes had himself a really good game. Only four carries, but one of them he was able to rip off for an 85-yard touchdown run. A lot of other running backs got playing time. Ryan Williams, Kobe Prentice, some really good performances in that wide receiver room for Bama. Defensively, you force two turnovers and uh, just hold Western Kentucky to only 145 yards in that game. Alabama is still going to be one of the best teams in the SEC this year, guys. They're going to have an interesting test coming up against South Florida. And then you have Wisconsin here in a couple of weeks. So we'll see if anything changes for Alabama. But for right now, they look fantastic. They move up, or I should say they stay where they are at number six, Notre Dame. How about them, huh? They vaulted on in here to my top five, a statement win at Kyle Field. And again, there are people out there talking about, well, if Notre Dame doesn't win this game, where are the statement wins going to come from? Well, you still have a game against Clemson. You still have a game coming up there uh, against the USC. I believe Notre Dame even has to play Louisville this season as well. There are moments to get some more wins, but especially a road win against a tough team, and it's not going to surprise me at all if Texas a makes their way back into my top 25. In fact, in fact, I expect them to not only make it back into my top 25, but the AP poll, the coaches poll. I think Texas a is too talented, but Notre Dame played a real Really, really good football game. Defensively, they were sensational. Riley Leonard, yeah, he could have been better, but overall was a really good leader and led this offense when he needed to for this Notre Dame Fighting Irish team. And Marcus Freeman's squad is in a really good place. Notre Dame's going to be a top contender come December and January. I got him rising into the top five at number five. Uh, but with Oregon falling out, pretty much everyone else just climbs up. Ole Miss climbs up there at number four. I mean, get used to hearing uh, the name Jackson Dart to why am I blanking on the receiver's name? I'm going to check that right now because I know it's going to bother me. But they demolished Furman 76 to nothing. 76 to nothing and defensively only 172 yards and the combination that I want you to get used to hearing get used to hearing Jackson Dart to Trey Harris 179 yards eight catches and two touchdowns for Harris Jackson Dart had himself a five touchdown day only five incompletions Ole Miss just looks sensational on both sides. Uh, again, we'll find out a lot more about them as they play tougher competition. But right now, for me, they're up to number four. Texas, they, for me, are up to number three. Uh, Texas absolutely demolished Colorado State. Quinn Ewers looked fantastic. Even Arch Manning got some playing time in there. All the new pieces look good. Uh, defensively for Texas, they looked fantastic as well. Not a whole lot of complaints for me for this Texas Longhorn team. They jump up a spot to number three, and I have switched my one and two. So Ohio State has fallen to two, and Georgia is up to number one. Again, you could still argue Ohio State's the better team than Georgia, 
but you can't deny what happened there on the field. Ohio State, especially in that first quarter against Akron, did struggle. The defense had a couple lapses. The offense just wasn't clicking right away, but Ohio State found their groove in the second half. They go demolish Akron, but Georgia beat a top 25 team. They beat Clemson, and not only beat Clemson, they thrashed Clemson. The defense was amazing for Georgia. The offense was as efficient as ever, and the Georgia Bulldogs cruised to a win over the Clemson Tigers, which is why they are now the number one team in the country. Carson Beck, Carson Beck looks every bit as good as advertised coming into the season. The offense looks great. The defense looks great. And again, Ohio State's still going to be a really good team this year. That defense was ridiculous in that Akron game. Will Howard, for the most part, looked good. The combination of Judkins and Henderson. Judkins can have a little bit of a better performance, but that looked good. The freshman, Jeremiah Smith, oh boy, how good is he? And the offensive line seems to be improved for the Buckeyes as well. To me, clearly the top, top two teams in the country. Texas has got a big matchup coming up this next week. And uh, overall, I expect some more shuffling, some more moving around next week. But there you have it. There's my new updated week two top 25. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Tell me your top 25. Tell me what you think of mine. Anything else that you have to say before, hey, maybe later on today, or if I don't get to them later on today, tomorrow will be a whole ton of weekly predictions coming out for you guys on some of the biggest matchups that we will see in week two of the college football season. Hey, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.